Hello everyone, my name is Yang Ha and I'm going to be talking about how to detect and assess the social cultural attitude towards different cultures through the lens of food reviews. So first, as Princeton University members, we know that building an inclusive and tolerant environment is imperative for the safety and well-being of all community members. And while intolerance can be overt, it can also exist in subtle ways. Um, as a person of Asian ethnicity growing up in the U.S., um, these are some comments that may have made me feel excluded over the years, such as, well, you're actually fluent in English, or ew, what are you eating when I brought Korean food to lunch as a kid? And in order to build such an inclusive environment, we have to be very intentional and cognizant of the current social cultural climate. Unfortunately, food serves as a very effective lens for this type of investigation because food and culture are so tightly coupled together. To the right, you see a very um, trendy food called kimchi. What you may not have known is that Southern Koreans actually eat a saltier kimchi than Northern Koreans because it used to get salty, it used to get hotter in the South. And therefore, they needed more salt for food preservation purposes. However, even with modern refrigeration, this trend has continued to this very day and has become a part of the culture. Um, the goal of this project is to ask how has the way we discuss Asian cuisine changed over time, especially relative to European and American cuisine. We can think about sentiments such as whether a statement is positive, neutral, or negative. We can also ask what kind of words do we use for each cuisine and why? Um, I hypothesized first that there may have been an initial intolerance towards Asian cuisine in the early to mid 2000s. However, as Asian culture has become more trendy, um, as shown by Gangnam Style, um, a song in 2013 on the right, um, the attitude towards Asian culture may have become more positive over the years. Um, the related work can be categorized into two broad categories. First, the first category tries to make use of restaurant reviews themselves. They face a numbers problem where there's just too many reviews for the amount of time that we have. So Lu and Xu use support vector machines to take a review and predict how helpful it's actually going to be. Chen et al. Um, takes a different approach and they take in restaurant reviews in aggregate and then try to summarize them effectively. The second broad category of related work tries to understand the social cultural climate through the lens of restaurant reviews. Kao et al. tried to understand what kind of topics trended during COVID-19. Zuken et al. took two neighborhoods in New York and tried to understand how demographics and socioeconomic status of neighborhoods can impact the ratings of restaurants that preside within them. The approach that this project takes is similar to the second category of the related works. Specifically, we try to understand the social cultural climate and more specifically, the attitude towards different cultures through the lens of food reviews. This is a very novel topic exploration, especially in the restaurant review domain. Um, we look at the Yelp data set, which consists of 7 million restaurant reviews, approximately, um, over 100,000 restaurants, and which re range basically from 2005 to 2022, although we'll be using the 2010 to 2021 range um, for purposes that are outlined in more detail in the paper. The implementation, we can begin at the top left corner in the green circle. We basically filter out the Yelp data set um, for irrelevant reviews and restaurants. And then to the right, we have the sentiment analysis pipeline. We choose Distilbert as our sentiment analysis model, run sentiment analysis on the Yelp data set. And finally, on these results, we perform aggregate analysis to get a general understanding of sentiment for each cuisine. And the regression analysis to attach correlational significance um, to the trends that we see. Starting in the green circle again, going down, we see the lexical pipeline now. Um, we first pre-process lexically using things such as tokenization and lemmatization. Then we perform both word cloud generation, topic modeling, and then frequency analysis. Of these, um, I, the frequency analysis is the most significant where we perform this on the level of unigrams, biograms, and trigrams. And then finally, we synthesize everything together. Before moving on to the results, I want to point to an important metric called the positive sentiment percentage, which is just the number of positive sentiment reviews divided by the total number of reviews. Um, look at the sentiment analysis results. The difference between the PPS of Asian cuisine and the PPS of European and American cuisine increases over time in a statistically significant um, fashion. It actually increases around 0.5% per year. Looking at each cuisine separately, the PPS of Asian cuisine 
rises around 0.2% per year, and the PPS of European and American cuisine falls around 0.3% per year, and all of these trends are statistically significant. Looking from a lexical analysis results, um, we see that bigrams and trigrams, the top bigrams and trigrams that are unique to European and American cuisine can sometimes be negative, but the same cannot be said for Asian cuisine. So the table on the right, we have the top trigrams that are unique to Asian cuisine on the left, and the top trigrams are unique to European and American cuisine on the right. And only for European and American cuisine do you see trigrams that are negative, such as go somewhere else, not come back, and good, not great. Another pattern that we see is 2016 seems to be a turning point for Asian cuisine. Um, specifically, the top bigrams that are unique to Asian cuisine still only starts to become positive starting in 2016. Um, to the table on the right, we basically see the top bigrams that are unique to Asian cuisine on the left, and the same that are unique to European and American cuisine on the right. We can see that only starting in 2016 do the bigrams that are unique to Asian cuisine actually begin to become positive. Likewise, um, to the table on the right, we see the top trigrams that are negative and unique to Asian cuisine on the left, and the same thing um, that are unique to European and American cuisine on the right. And basically we see that before 2016, there are occasionally trigrams that are negative in sentiment um, for Asian cuisine and that are unique to Asian cuisine only. However, starting in 2016, there are no negative trigrams that are unique to Asian cuisine. So coming to our conclusion, um, we can see that the sentiment and lexical analysis substantiates our hypothesis. Specifically, from the sentiment analysis standpoint, we can see that the PPS of Asian cuisine goes up relative to European and American cuisine. And from a lexical standpoint, we can see that um, keywords become more positive and less negative as the year um, progresses for um, Asian cuisine. And therefore, overall, it seems like Asian cuisine reviews are gearing towards the more positive end as the years go by. However, um, we cannot conclude anything about the part of our hypothesis that basically predicted that there may have been an initial intolerance towards Asian cuisine, especially in the early to mid um, 2000s. This is because our data set um, from our cutoff actually starts at 2010 to 2021. Um, and therefore, we can't really make these general conclusions about the initial intolerance, especially since in 2010, the PPS of the two cuisines are actually nearly identical. So this actually brings us to our future work, where we, maybe we can actually expand the retroactive time range to start asking, um, maybe as early as 2000, was there initial intolerance? Maybe as early as like 1990, was there initial intolerance and so on. Um, but this would be severely based on whether that kind of data set would be out there. Likewise, this is a very interesting research question. And it can actually be applied to different categories, whether more specific or more general. For example, you could look at Korean foods in general rather than like Asian cuisine as a whole. So that's my project. And I would like to um, give a sincere gratitude towards Professor Felbaum, who's given us her most helpful um, advice and mentoring throughout the semester. Um, I would also like to thank Yao for the data set that they provided. Um, in addition to that, various image sources used in this presentation have been detailed under each presentation slide. And then finally, the code-related sources are actually detailed in the Jupyter Notebook scripts themselves. Thank you very much.